ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to 1969, where the new Honda CB750, the first ever big four-cylinder super motorcycle, reigns supreme. Except it sort of isn't 1969, it's 2020. Actually, this bike is from 2016, and it's a CB1100, Honda's retro machine. And where other brands have tried to capture the romantic image of their former glory, Honda kind of stuck to reality. Just have a look at these old school sticky mirrors, these doorknob indicators, these funny little rear sets, and look, even a center stand. How 1969 is that? It's not just the aesthetics that have remained contemporary. The motor, although at 1140cc is bigger than the original 750, remains four-cylindered and air-cooled. They have upped the horsepower a little though, from 68 to 88. Funnily enough, the original CB750 in 1969, its big claim to fame was that it could do 201 kilometers per hour. I mean, that was the royal standard, the gold standard then. That is when you became proper rock stars, 200 kilometers per hour. On this bike, uh, I got, well, a professional rider on a closed circuit, obviously got uh, just over 190 kilometers per hour. So that's slightly less. Yeah, that's slightly less. But what I will say about this, by this, this motor, typical Honda fashion, it's silky smooth, butter smooth. It's, it's almost like calming and relaxingly smooth. And uh, yeah, a lot of people are going to criticize it for that. I mean, I'm going to admit to being one of them. Even in 19, 1969, the people were like, oh, you don't need that Jap scrap. You need, you know, proper British and you need proper Italian. Ah, British dump it, Italian foot. Ah, ah. And I'll be honest, I'm sort of guilty of the same sort of comments, you know, on nowadays machines. But the thing is, while people were criticizing Honda for all of that, Honda was sitting back and um, selling a lot of them. Yes, they sold a lot of of these motorcycles, yeah. While the motor may push 20 horsepower more than the original, the lack of speed might be explained by the fact that they've gained a little bit of weight. This bike weighs in at 244 kilograms. That's 11 kilograms heavier than the 750. This is explained by the fact that most of the motorcycle is made out of steel, a material that is tough but heavy. Also, the CB has remained true to the original by using twin rear shocks, traditional forks, and old school wheels. There really is a lot of, it's a very simple motorcycle. I mean, the electronics, well, it's got spark plugs, and it doesn't really go much above that. Um, and you look at these, I mean, the dash has got these old school dials, which are, they're kind of nice, actually. I mean, I, I like, <laughs> on, a, on a bike, like, I love my big TFT dash, but I, I kind of like those on a bike like this. The seat is also kind of old school. And um, while the modern designer seats are very nice to look at, to sit on, not as great. That's why I kind of I kind of prefer one of these. And apart from that, it's just, you know, the suspension is not very sophisticated. You're not going to win any laps, any race around Kyle Army. But for what we're doing here, which is just simple calm riding, it more than does the job. And this bike weighs a lot, but it's all in typical under fashion it's all very low to the ground very centralized so you kind of don't feel it so much it's sort of annoyingly honda everything just works okay so while this machine may be very good in 1969 why exactly would we want one in 2020 Let's put this into context. This is a 2016 model. It's on the floor of Fire It Up and it's for sale for 79,000 Rand. So for 79,000 Rand, you're gonna get all of this and 88 horsepower. Shall we compare that from a price point? Let's look at other motorcycles in that sort of price bracket and the sort of power they produce. First of all, there's the Suzuki GSX-R 250R. That is 24 horsepower. Honda CBR 300, 30 horsepower. Yamaha R3 stepping it up, 42 horsepower. KTM have the RC390 at 43. And then Kawasaki have the Ninja 400 for 49. So this makes nearly double of what those do for the same price. Now I know what some of you are saying, but hang on, this is a four-year-old used motorcycle where those are all new. But 
what you're not understanding here is that this is a Honda built mostly out of steel and a motor that's so de-stressed it's putting Tibetan monks to shame. When all those other motorcycles have long disappeared into rust, when our bones are in the ground and petrifying, when humans have evolved so that they have giant thumbs and faces of TFT dashes, when the sun expands and completely engulfs the earth, this motorcycle will still look exactly like this and will still be running with those parts exactly like that. That is why you need one of these. So, so, well, we all know that Honda build quality is pretty good, but what you're saying, Don, is that it's so good when I'm a fossil, the CB1100 will still be running. Yes, you'll be <laughs> melted. The sun would have expanded. You're not even a fossil anymore. You're just vapor somewhere it, through the it cosmos. It is one of those the bikes, Honda will though. still be there. It is yeah. one of those bikes, a massive lump of a thing. It's kind of sturdily and sternly it's good just, looking. It's but made it's, out of pure ironmongery, you know yeah. what I mean? Air cooled, 1140 motor pushing 88 horsepower. It's just, it lasts you forever. The weird thing is though, I mean, it is a lovely bike, um, but you don't see many of them in South Africa, do you? I no. don't know if it became imported officially or they just- Yeah, they sold a whole two of them, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got one of them, yeah. 50% of, yeah. Bike. Well, this whole retro craze, I mean, if you're in the market for a, a, a sort of big naked retro bike these days, you're probably looking at something like a Z900 RS from Kawasaki, maybe a Ducati Scrambler type well, of thing. We're talking about it. I mean, retro bikes from Japanese. There's the RS. It's not much. We absolutely love that RS, Z900 yeah. RS. Uh, Yamaha had that XSR, XSR 900, XSR. which was an MT09 with a bit redressed. With a bit of stuff stuck up. But I like the look yeah. of it, but it didn't do anything, it? Did didn't it? do anything. It, it's, well, it's not retro because it doesn't go back to anything, does it? Well, to the 80s, 70s and 80s Yamaha's excesses and stuff. I think that was the shape of the tank. Yeah. But, well, think of another one, Suzuki. What have they done along the retro craze? Well, they, well they're so far behind in terms of Nothing. like modern gadgets. They're still, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit harsh. Uh, so normally you go to the European manufacturer for that sort of thing. But they are, you know, that's new bike prices. You're looking upwards 150 to 200 grand at least. I mean, the money they're asking for this, it just seems... 79,000 Rand. I, I read it out, there's just, it's basically for a new bike. Yeah. Because it's got like what, 2,000 Ks on it or something? It, it had 1,500 Ks on it. <laughs> it's it's someone running run in. run in. Yeah. It's run in. It's I mean, easy. that bike will do a million kilometers on that motor easily. It's just, <laughs> someone's going to buy that thing. It's going to become a family heirloom. I can't see it lasting long, but uh, if you see this program and you're in the market for something like that, get down to fire it up uh, because it's one of those bikes, it's not gonna hang around long. And I have to say that's one of the great reasons for coming down here because the range of bikes that keep popping in, we're always finding really interesting stuff that we quite fancy riding. So uh, yeah, bear that in mind, down to fire it up, have a look. You'll probably find your dream bike here. Anyway, after the break, we shall be back with, well, with him again. <laughs>